Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. Out of ammo, out of time. I'm your long-suffering host, as per normal, Karabi Terra 8, and here we are in episode 30 of season 1 of the Investigator Games. Yes, and to herald in the Investigator Games uh, episode 30 in season 1, I mean there's obviously more than that, is Mandy Thompson, everybody's favourite uh, arcane researcher. There she is, just in case you weren't sure that that's what she did. There's a picture of her looking at a book, looking very serious. Yes, and uh, so for those of you who are new to the channel, I heartily welcome you. Thank you for watching. What is the Investigator Games? Well, the Investigator Games are, I suppose, a bit like the Hunger Games where uh, each investigator is taken true solo through a scenario in this season, which was season one and is season one, The Gathering. And we put them through, pilot them through The Gathering, and we see how they go. And depending on how they go, they end up in a league table like this one. Um, and yes, we can see that all of the investigators so far have been ranked based on their performance. Uh, and uh, yes... Uh, we can see we've uh, we've had a pretty good turnout for the Dream Eater expansion investigators so far, uh, doing quite well uh, in this scenario, and I'm sure Mandy will also uh, keep that trend going. Uh, I also do the investigator games for uh, Eldritch Horror. Same thing, true solo uh, with Azathoth, um, which is really tough. At the best of times and uh, also uh, Elder Sign Omens as well so uh, I would like to do others like Mansions of Madness uh, but it's just time uh, would not allow me if I could do this full time I would I would be doing all of them but unfortunately that's just not possible so uh, yes let's uh, have a little chat about Mandy her um, very interesting um, special abilities and whatnot. Um, I had the good fortune of chatting to Mandy as well uh, in the green room before the start of this. Uh, we had a little a chat. Very serious uh, individual, very interested in arcane works and things and uh, really not something I, I know enough about. But um, a little bit disdainful maybe of the investigator games. Feels a bit too commercial for her tastes. She's standing here in the study at the moment. The crowds are coming in. Uh, she's looking at some books in the study on the bookshelf. Um, so she's some investigators are very keen to be in the investigator games. Um, as we saw last week, Tony was more focused on the, whether there was prize money. Um, uh, Tommy Muldoon was just interested in, in sort of showing everybody how good he is. So everybody's got their own motivations for doing it. Mandy seems a little bit aloof about the whole thing, but we'll see how she goes. So let's have a look at her stat lines. So it's very much, I have to say, first of all, that Mandy Thompson doesn't look like an invest. She's, she's designed to be a solo investigator. So as we now know with these investigators in Arkham Horror, the card game, and it's the case in Eldritch Horror as well, some investigators are sort of designed to be played in solo and... Obviously, um, Ashcan Pete is a is a good example of that. He lends him, lends he directly lends himself to solo play because he's got Duke, and so it means he's more well rounded and can investigate and fight relatively easily. Uh, other investigators are sort of less, not really designed so much for solo play, and so they tend to struggle a little bit more in the investigator games. And I feel that Mandy Thompson. Um, may fall into that, but we will see. And we can see her stat line is kind of skewed quite strongly towards investigation. She has an intellect of five. So I think the main thing for her is to get through as quickly as possible with as, with as few um, um, you know, fight monster or enemy encounters as possible because she has a fight of one. So she's definitely not a fighter. She's an investigator. 
Her um, agility and her willpower are reasonably okay at three, so it's really about avoiding fighting. The problem is, of course, that in the gathering, you can't really avoid fighting. You really do have to take on the ghoul priest at the end. Um, you know, you can't avoid that. However, there is Leech Chandler, so I would say that given her intellect to five, she will definitely be needing to avail herself of Leech Chandler as well. Now, um, just in terms of her special abilities, um, when I read them the first time, I found it a little bit difficult to exactly work out how this all worked. So it's a reaction ability. Um, when an investigator at your location would search their deck or the encounter deck, they may instead search three additional cards or resolve an additional target of the search, and you can do that once per round. Now, Arkham DB... Uh, I, I, uh, I, I went there because there was a good explanation of how that works. Essentially, the way that it works, if we take something like the Old Book of Law, for example, which triggers a, a search, um, a search um, action, you can do one, one of two things. You can either, instead of searching the top three cards, and you need to decide this beforehand, you can't kind of change your mind part way through, you can take the top, top, look at the top six cards, or you can look at the top three cards and take two. That's basically the way that it works. So this has all kinds of applications because it doesn't apply in solo, but when an investigator, any investigator at your location. So Mandy Thompson's reaction ability can work with anybody. So in multiplayer, um, this can work in all kinds of ways with all sorts of cards, like even things like the backpack, for example. This is an example of a card where this would work. So it just means that everybody in the group, as long as they're at Mandy Thompson's location, their ability to search up and find the cards that they want or get more cards are greatly enhanced. So very, very positive from that perspective. Her Elder Sign ability gives her no benefit. She gets plus zero, which is fairly harsh, I guess, but you can search the top three cards of your deck for a card and either draw it or commit it to this test. So I suppose the offset there is that you could choose a card that would help you pass. Um, so it's a little bit like an old book of law kind of effect, but, but just sort of a bit better because you can immediately commit that card to the test. So that's Mandy Thompson's special abilities. Her deck building is also interested, interesting because you can choose your deck size 30, 40, or 50, uh, then you can then you choose a secondary class choice, Mystic, Rogue, or Survivor. Now, I've noticed on Arkham DB that Mystic seems to be the one that people are choosing the most, but we'll see with her starter deck, um, they're using Rogue for some reason, which I'm not sure about. I suppose it rounds her out in some ways, but... Um, yeah, so uh, you know you have a choice there. Then you can use your seeker cards, um, and you can also use the secondary or the off class. Um, so here's her here's her blurb here. Ever since she was a child, Mandy would read whenever she could not sleep, such as being the case on many nights. Her remarkable memory and ability to correlate facts have landed her a highly valued job as a researcher for Miskatonic University. She has spent hours poring over the profane pages of ancient forbidden texts. In doing so, she has discovered a pattern indicating an impending cataclysm. Has paranoia finally caught up with her, or is a disaster of truly epic proportions on the horizon? So that's Mandy uh, in a nutshell. Uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of Seekers, so I'm actually, I really like uh, Mandy. I think she's a really strong addition so that's interesting because when I look look at the last two, so Tommy, uh, and you might disagree with me on this, and Tony, I mean, they're interesting in and of themselves, Tommy and Tony, but they feel like they're very much part of similar archetypes that already exist, whereas Mandy um, feels like a really strong addition. I mean, you could say she's um, similar to... Um, What's her name? The uh, oh, I've just forgotten it all of a sudden. Sorry, my mind's gone blank. So many investigators. I suppose in some way she's a little bit like... Um, 
Where is she? Daisy. Yeah, Daisy Walker. So in some ways, she's a little bit like Daisy Walker um, because of her tome abilities, um, but not in quite the same way. And Daisy Walker leads into, um, leads into Mystic much more strongly, I suppose, in a way. And uh, I suppose Min, is she like Min? I don't, I don't think she's that similar to Min. Um, no, Min is quite different. I mean, they're all bookish in similar ways, but I suppose Mandy Thompson, unlike the other two um, that I've seen so far in the Dream Eaters, and it's going to get harder as there's more investigators, the sort of differences are starting to get more subtle, but I feel like she is a very strong addition to the uh, Seeker group, and particularly as a multiplayer Seeker group, Seeker. I think she's very, very strong because of her her ability for searching, which can be conferred to other investigators. Okay, so if we uh, shift over to her deck, um, this is the FFG starter deck, um, official starter deck. There were some errors, uh, which I hope have been fixed up uh, from the version 6 that I was looking at. Just some weird naming was wrong and things weren't quite right, but they've clearly chosen the 30 card option because uh, it is a sort of for starter decks. Um, and the other thing they've chosen is they've decided to make the of class um, rogue, which is not what other people are doing. Other people seem to be using mystic rather than rogue. Um, for whatever reason, uh, they chose um, rogue which I suppose boosts up her ability to um, fight in some way with things like backstab and sneak attack. So I can, you know, from a solo perspective, it, it makes sense. Um, although um, I suppose they could have had shriveling and things if, if chosen uh, mystic. But anyway, that's what the starter deck has. So if we look what we've got here, it's a pretty sort of standard flashlight, two flashlights and a knife. And in fact, in terms of fighting generally, if and you know we've got to think about the ghoul priest because ultimately we need to defeat the ghoul priest. To do that, we probably go, we're probably going to need the knife and um, we're going to need leader Chandler. And even then, it's not going to be easy to take down the ghoul priest without some backstabs and sneak attacks. Um, there is a mind over matter. There's only one of them. So uh, again, having mind over matter is going to be fairly essential, which leads us to the point that we're probably going to be relying on things like our old book of law um, to really help us find these cards that we need, because if we don't have them, trying to get the ghoul priest uh, defeated is going to be very, very challenging. So the old book of law is going to come in very handy, as is Malign Christopher, of course. Uh, he's always handy in a Seeker deck uh, in Hyper awareness, whilst the intellect is not as important as the evasion, I would say. That's also, if we're using the line and we're getting a reasonable number of resources, then we can use hyper awareness to evade the ghoul priest, and then we can use our backstabs and sneak attacks and things. So, yep, they're all sort of standard cards that you would expect in the sort of general hand, if you like. Um, Standing Revelation is a new card in the Dream Eater expansion. Um, it's, um, it can't be played, um, but there's a reaction trigger. So I, I quite like these new cards. They're sort of in the deck and they sort of represent a um, searching. So the reaction trigger says when you search your deck and a Standing Revelation is amongst the searched cards, discard it and either gain two resources or place one secret on an asset you control. Um, <clears throat> well, there was no cards that we have with secrets. I know there are other cards that do that. So that's quite a nice addition and, and synergy there. But obviously we can use this to gain resources other than emergency cash, which can, which can be in hyper awareness. It's kind of, it would have been nice maybe to then have had... Um, 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 of hyper awareness um, hard knocks as well but anyway then there's a backstab as we know which can help us defeat the ghoul priest or whatever there's a barricade eh, 
No, I'm not too keen on the barricade. I'm, I'm not sure. It has three pips, though, so it's useful for that. We have an elusive, which can always be helpful. Two emerging mind over matter, as we said. Three occult evidence. Again, this is a... Um, um, this is um, when you search your deck and occult evidence is amongst the search cards, you can reveal it, draw it, and discover one clue at your location. Um, so it's a... Uh, yeah. Uh, so it, it's quite a nice card from that perspective. And that's a Mandy Thompson card specific. So that's her sort of special ability. So she's searching for finding occult evidence. So another way to get clues. Then there's a sneak attack, which uh, exhausts an enemy and do two damage. Working a hunch, which allows us to get more clues. There's so many ways to get clues in this. In this, It's really kind of overdone in a way. Deduction as well. Manual dexterity. There's an opportunist and overpower, which we may need. Perception, unexpected courage. And then uh, we have a base uh, um, random treachery. Uh, um, weakness was um, haunted. Uh, so we get minus one to each of our skills and we just need to discard it with two actions. And then shocking discovery is the special weakness. The thing there is when you're searching. So Mandy Thompson is all about searching. And I guess thematically this is if you search too much, you're going to lead to horrible discoveries, which can have terrible consequences in that way. Okay, so that we go. So there we go. Some very interesting cards with Mandy. I'm looking forward to um, playing her. So here we are ready to roll in the uh, in the gathering. We're here in the study with the two clues. Now, um, I've put the other cards out there as I always do just to save time. Um, it's, you know, that's not the way obviously that, that you would set it up in real life. Uh, just to, just, uh, just uh, shuffle up her deck. If we go up here, we're... Uh, we're um, we can see we're in, um, I can't see it here, do we? Let's just move that up a little bit. We can see we're in turn one, uh, zero. Uh, we'll just shuffle up the encounter deck. So I think we're ready to roll. Let's just read out the agenda and the act. So agenda 1A, what's going on? It's late at night and your hold up and your study actually are researching bloody disappearances that have been taking place in the region. A few hours into your research, you hear the sound of strange chanting coming from your parlour down the hall. At the same time, you hear dirt churning if something were digging beneath the floor. And trapped, as you leap to investigate, the door to your study vanishes before your eyes, leaving only solid wall. You're trapped inside your study until you can find another way out. So yes, we've got to get two clues. We're trapped in the study until we can find another way out. So... Mandy waves to the crowd, looks up from her book. The crowd goes wild. It is now time to start the investigator games. And there goes the bell. And Mandy is off and running. Let's draw her opening hand. Well, what do we want? What do we want? What do we want? Really clear what we need. Milan Christopher. Old book of law. And a knife. I think if we start with those three, we can find everything else that we need. But that would be a good start. Those three, and I'll be reasonably, let's shuffle it up, reasonably happy. And we start with none of those things. <laughs> we start with none of those things. Right. The only one I'm keeping is mind over matter. And the reason I'm doing that is I really don't, I really need that. So I'm going to put in the other four because they're all nice to have, but not essential. But I do want to keep mind over matter because um, it can make a real difference at the end. Um, because we can use that to fight the ghoul priest. So let's draw another four cards. Uh, and there we go. Knife, Old Book of Law, Milan Christopher. Fantastic. That that That's one of the, <laughs> the best second draws I've ever had, where uh, I got nothing really in the first draw that I wanted, and in the second draw I got everything that I wanted. Amazing. Okay, well, that is, you couldn't ask for a better start, really. I mean, seriously. Whoops. Couldn't ask for a better start than that. We've pretty much got everything that we need. Um, that's really great. So um, let's let's get going. So first action, we're going to spend four. 
And we're going to bring out Miller and Christopher. That's our first action. Yay! Brilliant. Second action, because I don't want to be caught short with that, um, is I'm going to spend one and I'm going to bring out the knife. Now, I know I've left the old book of law, but I am going to bring it out next time. But I really want to get Malign Christopher and a knife so that if, you know, we get any monsters, we get anything like that, then at least we have at least some ability to fight or evade or something. So um, I just want to make sure I've got those down. Um, also, if we get Crypt Chill, it means, yes, I can lose the knife. Uh, I'd, I've only got, I've got two versions of the knife. But I only have one Malign Christopher and I have one old book of law. So also I want the knife out in case Crypt Chill comes along as well. So that's the other reason. I've played The Gathering enough to know that uh, horrible things can happen like that. And for our third action, we will go ahead and investigate. So a shroud of two in the study. So we will go ahead and investigate. And we are a six, so we don't need to commit anything to it. A six versus a two. So minus four or better. Chaos gives us a, uh, a cultist. And a cultist is minus one if you fail to take a horror. Well, of course, we don't fail. So we get a clue and we get a resource. Thank you, Milan Christopher. And we get our first clue. There we go. Easy. Um, all right. So uh, there's our first clue. So that was uh, that was a pretty good round. First round for Mandy Thompson. So we spent four to bring out Milan Christopher. We then spent one to bring out the knife. Uh, we then investigated successfully. We got the first clue and we got a resource in the process from Milan Christopher. So that's the end of uh, our first investigation phase. There are no enemies to speak of. So we move into upkeep, flip these over, take a resource, draw a card. And the card we draw is Overpower. I'm going to move this over here because these are Ghoul Priest cards. These are cards that we might potentially use when the Ghoul Priest comes along. Although, actually, to be honest, Perception might be something. So all of these cards might be Ghoul Priest cards because if we played Mind Over Matter, then Perception would be what we would be using. Um, but, yeah, so there we go. That's the end of the upkeep. So then, and yeah. So we will move into the Mythos phase. So let's pop up to here. We'll move into turn two. We'll take the first Doom of three. Uh, we'll shuffle up the Encounter deck again. And let's see what the Encounter deck has for us. And the Encounter deck has a Ghoul Minion. Ghoul Minion. Ghoul Minion. Ghoul Minion. Hello, I'm a Ghoul Minion. So we're starting off with Monsters. A Ghoul Minion. Two, two, two. Um, yes. So there we go. Okay. So let's move into our second investigation phase. So we kind of have two choices here. We can um, attempt to fight the ghoul minion. So we are a fight of one. Yay! And uh, we have a knife, which would give us a two. So it would be a two versus a two doing a point of damage. So we would have to do that successfully twice. We could use overpower, uh, which would make that a four versus a two. Um, but we would still have to succeed twice to kill the ghoul minion. The alternative is, is we uh, attempt to evade the ghoul minion. We get the next clue and then we get the hell out of the study and the ghoul minion dies. And I feel like that's probably a better way to go. I feel like that's more likely to succeed. So uh, I think we'll go down that path. I think evasion rather than fighting at this stage is better. Of course, the other thing is, yes, I know you're all screaming at me. We could throw the knife, which would give us a three, which we could make a five with an overpower. Five versus two, and then we could kill it that way. But that feels like we could do that, but I don't really want to do that. I'm going to try and evade. If we find... Uh, that that's not working, then we could potentially use that strategy instead. But at the first instance, I'm going to try and evade. So my first action is to evade. So we are a three versus a two, which is a minus one or better. And Chaos Bag is a zero, so we succeed. Where's she gone? Oh, she was here a second ago. All I can see is a big book. Where's she gone? Okay, let's evade the ghoul. 
first action. Second action, we will investigate again. So we are a six versus a two, six versus a two, and we absolutely succeed. We've had no problem getting these clues whatsoever. So we get the second clue, which means we get a resource, very nice, and we will spend those clues immediately. Uh, and we will shift up uh, to the act deck, here we go. Um, and we will flip this and read what it says. You notice that the edges of your newly purchased rug are tattered and mud-stayed. Finding this odd, you shift the furniture aside and pull back the rug. To your surprise, you see the door leading out of your study. You slowly turn the knob and the door swings open, revealing your hallway below. You jump through the doorway, landing on your feet on soft dirt. The door to the study slams shut above you. The smell of burning wood fills the narrow hall, intermingled with the scent of rot and decay. So put into play the set-aside hallway, cellar, attic and parlour. Done. Discard each enemy at the study, and each investigator place each investor in the hallway and remove the study from the game. So let's do all those little bits and pieces. So, um, so we move into the hallway. Doink. The study disappears. And so does the ghoul minion. So the ghoul minion is gone. We'll put him in the discard. He's there. The study disappears. Study is gone. So we're in the hallway. Um, and so therefore, let's have a read of what this says. So this says the barrier, a glowing barrier blocks the path to your parlour. As you move toward it, intense heat forces you to back away. Picking up a handful of dirt, you toss it at the barrier and watch in horror as the dirt incinerates. Never seen that in a book. Perhaps there's something in the cellar or the attic that can help. Ooh. When the round ends, investigators in the hallway may, as a group, spend the requisite number of clues to advance, which is three. Okay, there we go. So that was our second action. So we got rid of the um, we got rid of the ghoul. So for our third action, we will spend the three, and we will bring out the old book of law. So there we go. There's our two hand slots taken up. We've got the old book of law, so we can start using that to look at the top six cards or draw draw two cards, whichever we prefer. And that was our third action. There we go. So pretty successful. We managed to evade the ghoul minion. We then spent our, we then investigated and used the two clues to get out of the study. We're now in the hallway. So rather than go up to the attic, we've got out the old book of law, which we can use to uh, search up. But it does take an action, but it basically allows you to uh, get a card or indeed two cards, if I wish. And looking at what I've got, I've got Malign Christopher, I've got the Mind Over Matter, so I'd probably go for two cards because more cards the better. I don't know if I'm missing anything especially, I guess. So I think I'd probably go for two cards each time. Okay, so that's the end of the investigation phase. The other thing is if you're not searching six cards, you're less likely to come up with your weakness. So there's also a benefit with not searching up six cards each time because you might get the uh, your weakness instead. So there are no enemies to speak of. So we move into the upkeep phase, flip these back over, take a resource, draw a card, and we draw an unexpected courage, which of course is also very welcome. So I think the thing I can already see here is the quicker we get these clues done, the better. Ah, hyper awareness, that would be good to have. So hopefully we can find that. Um, but um, yes, we, uh, we've got, we're getting enough cards that we can play mind over matter. We can use things like perception on unexpected courage to give us a seven against the ghoul priest. Um, which which means we can um, the problem is of course that doesn't do all of the damage so the other thing I thought is things like sneak attack and backstab are going to be something we're going to need but let's not worry about that now let's get the clues we can get back to the hallway and then we can make a decision about whether we need to keep searching up um, for cards or whether we um, we can 
um, we can move ahead. So that's probably where the old book of law is going to come in the best when we get to there, whether we really need it or not. Because at the moment, I think speed is of the essence. So we move into the mythos phase. We'll move up here. We are now in turn three to doom. This will flip next time. Let's see what the encounter deck has for us. And the encounter deck has a crypt chill. Okay, we knew it was going to come up. So test four, if you fail, we're a three. I don't really want, I don't want, want to lose these things, so I'm probably going to commit the unexpected courage because there's no guts in this deck. So that's going to give us a five versus a four. Let's go with that. Five versus a four, and the chaos bag gives us a minus one, I think. So I think we succeeded. Minus one. So we succeed. Lucky. There we go. But if we had failed, it's much better to have lost the knife than either the old Book of Law or Dr. Malone Christopher. So there we go. The knife is playing that kind of role as well. So that was the end of the mythos phase. So we move into the investigation phase. Like I said, I could start using the old Book of Law now, but quite frankly, I want to get these clues as quickly as possible. And then once we've gotten all the clues and we've got the victory points, we can use the old Book of Law to then round out what we've got depending on what we have there. So let's just uh, pop up here. So we're going to move into the attic, La -dee -da -dee -da, up to the attic, flip this over. Obviously two clues, one shroud. After you enter the attic, take a horror. <gasps> so we take a horror. Doink. Um, okay, that was our first action. Moving up. Moving on up. Moving to the attic. Nothing stopping me. I'm burning clues. Do, do. Sorry. Okay, let's move into the second action. We are going to investigate. It's a one versus a six. Like, all we can do is auto fail it. So we pass. That's one. And I'll do it again. And we pass again. So there we go. We get both of the clues. Both of the clues, which means we get the first victory point. Crowd goes wild. <sighs> There's the first victory point in the victory display. Fantastic. Let's take these two clues. Pop down here. There we go. And we get two resources for that as well. Fantastic. So actually, the problem with things like using deduction and things is that you don't get the extra resources. So in some ways, it's better. I mean, it's faster, obviously, but uh, we get the extra resources. Okay, so that was pretty successful from an investigation phase perspective. We moved into the attic. We took a horror. We investigated twice, we succeeded and got a victory point. Next time, down to the cellar. That's the next thing to do. So we move into the enemy phase. There are no enemies to speak of, so we move into upkeep. We we'll flip these over, take another resource, draw a card, and we draw into hyper-awareness. Very nice. That's great. So I'm really pleased because... That just allows us to much easier to evade and quite frankly gives us something to use our resources because we're gathering them up. So the only thing now that I would like, which we don't have, is a backstab and or a sneak attack because they will just ensure that we can kill the ghoul priest relatively easily. Okay, so we move into the mythos phase. This is where it all happens now. We're in turn four. Doom of three, which means this flips over. Uh, you, your house continues to change before your very eyes. The walls have decayed and the ground in many rooms has turned to dirt. It's almost as if you've been transported somewhere else entirely. Although every now and again you recognise elements of your former home. The lead investigator must, disgu must disguise, must decide. Either each investigator discards a card at random nope or takes two horror we will be taking the two horror the horror the horror okay we'll be taking the horror let's do that now yep we'll take the two horror we've got horror we can spare and now we're in rise of the ghouls the floor beneath you is giving way and you see a vast network of tunnels twisting into the darkness below. Shapes and silhouettes of strange creatures move swiftly through the tunnels, trying to find their way up. You probably don't want to be here when they do. Okay, there we go. So Rise of the Ghouls, we've got seven, um, seven Doom to do this bit. So we've got plenty of time. We're in turn four. 
we're making good progress. Um, as we know, the fastest is seven turns. Um, eight is pretty blistering fast. So um, we're doing pretty well uh, so far. Okie dokie. So that's the, let's click on the encounter and see what encounter we draw. And we draw gr grasping hands. Grasping hands, test three for each point you fell by. So it's three on three. I'm not throwing in hyper awareness. I really want to get that onto the table. So we will just do a three versus a three and we get a zero. Awesome. Grasping hands, no problem for Mandy. Okay, let's move into the investigation phase. Three actions. First action, we will uh, move down to the hallway and then we will move down to the cellar. So the second action. So down to the hallway and then donk, 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 down to the cellar. Uh, as we go down to the cellar, we're reading one of our books called Finding Clues in the Cellar, a primer for investigators. And of course, we're not watching what we're doing. We slip on some ice and go tumbling down and the corner of the book kind of hits us in the side of the eye. Ouch! Take a damage. There we go. So we have one action left. Uh, so we could either, we could do a couple of things. We could, oh, we could investigate. Uh, Shroud of four and wear a six, so pretty easy. We could, but I'm thinking I might bring out hyper awareness. And the reason for that is, is that um, if something like the icy ghoul, I mean, it's unlikely, but that's our third action. But if the icy ghoul, or worse, the um, the um, ravenous ghoul comes out, um, I want to be in a position where I can evade it. So we've got plenty of resources to do that. I don't want to be wasting time fighting things that I have no hope of um, killing. So I think I just want the hyper awareness there. Um, so that we can um, we can go ahead and investigate. We could even use the resources to uh, get clues for hi from hyper awareness, but I probably want to avoid that if possible. But I think that's a prudent thing to do. So there are no enemies to speak of. So we move into the upkeep phase. We'll flip these over. We will take a resource. We will draw a card, and we draw into elusive. Very nice. That's a great card. Uh, it's actually a great card because when the ghoul priest comes along, the parlor is revealed, so you can actually use elusive to get yourself into the parlor without having to make an evasion check, which I think we will be doing. So that's great. Now, I just wish we had a backstab or something like that, but we can search that up perhaps um, when we get a bit, little bit closer because we've got to think about how we're going to kill this ghoul priest. And whilst my, my never matter... Uh, would help that would mean only three points of damage so then we would be lying relying on the knife and we would be a one two three four five uh, with leader chandler would be six but still six versus four is a little bit on the low side so it feels like it's a little bit risky whereas if we've got a sneak attack or something we can just um we can you know finish off the ghoul priest anyway that's something to think about down the track so that's the end of the upkeep phase. We um, we move into the mythos phase. We'll pop up to uh, here. So we're in turn five. First doom is down. Let's see what the encounter deck has for us. And the encounter deck has an ancient evils. Okay. So uh, that just adds to doom so that just pushes the doom along a little bit okay no problem all right so we move into the investigation phase we have three actions um okay so obviously uh the um at the cellar not the attic the cellar is a four shroud location and we have a six so it's a minus two or better i think we can go ahead and do that so let's just go ahead first action invest oops first action we will investigate at a minus two or better, we get a plus one. So easy. Let's just do it again. Minus two or better, and we get a minus two. That's right, isn't it? Six versus four, so we get both of them easy. We are just hoovering up these clues like there is no tomorrow. There we go. There we go. There's our two clues, which means, yes, indeed. 
There's our second victory. Point. Crowd goes wild. <laughs> Mandy waves to the crowd. She's really um, had no problem getting any of these clues, which means we get two resources, of course, from Milan. So we've got lots of resources. We have one action left. Um, so I think the best thing to do is to move up to the hallway. So then we're ready. So we move up to the hallway. Now, we have a choice here because what we could do is we could actually trigger the Ghoul Priest at the end of this turn, which would be blisteringly fast. But um, I think if we had a backstab or a sneak attack, I would go for it. But we don't. So I think it's worthwhile taking another turn, using the old Book of Law to just try and get ourselves, if nothing else, more pips, but possibly a sneak attack or a backstab, even an opportunist, something just to make sure that our likelihood of defeating the Ghoul Priest is a little bit better. So I just want to take a turn to do that. I could be a bit more reckless, but I think given Mandy's relative weaknesses, I think it's probably prudent. And some of you are like, no, 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 but I think it's probably prudent that we, that we do that um, and then trigger the Ghoul Priest at the end of the next turn. So we will move into the enemy phase. No enemies to speak of, so we move into upkeep. Unless, of course, on the upkeep, let's see what happens. We draw a magnifying glass. <laughs> well, we can use that with mind over matter, no question, but that's a bit too little too late with the magnifying glass. But anyway, so um, there we go. All right, so let's move back into another Mythos phase. We're now in turn six. Three Doom down on the table. Let's see what the good old encounter deck has for us, and it has another Crit Chill. Ooh, ouch, 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 ouch. Test forehead. We literally have no cards to deal with this. Oh, crit chill. All right, well, let's see what happens. Because uh, we've got to get plus one or better, and we get a minus two, so we fail. So we have to, have to get rid of one of these cards. So either we get rid of hyper-awareness. Is it any? An asset, yeah. Oh. Yeah, okay, so we either get rid of hyper-awareness, and basically hyper-awareness is there for evasion. That's the main reason for it. We get rid of the knife. We get rid of the old book of law. Or we get rid of Bernard Christopher. <laughs> <sighs> this is really... Uh... So we don't need hyper-awareness in the first instance because we have elusive. But we might need it because the ghoul priest has um, retaliation and there might be other monsters we need to evade. So I feel bad about that. I don't feel like we can evade get rid of the knife. I know there's a second knife in there somewhere, but who knows? Definitely not Malign Christopher, if nothing else. Although, actually, I've just realized we're going to lose Malign Christopher. Actually, no, I've just realized. Yeah, you're all screaming at me. Get rid of Milan. Of course, we've used Malign Christopher. There are no more clues. We're going to bring Lita Chandler on board, and she's going to replace Malign Christopher. So it's obvious we get rid of Milan. Sorry, Milan, your job is done. Easy. Done. Yeah. Okay, that's that. All right, no, not too bad. I'd totally forgotten, of course, that if you get Leader Chandler, you can't have Malign Christopher anyway, so. And there are no more clues to get, so it's not like um, we would use him for that. Um, so, and I know he's a passive plus one stat, but um, Leader Chandler gives you plus one damage for monsters, so, yeah. Okay, I think the Ghoul Priest is a monster. 
I think so. All right, so let's move into the investigation phase. And here we are. So we are here in the hallway waiting to do what we need to do. So I think the first thing we do is we exhaust the Book of Law. Here we go. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to, so we have a choice. We could either, this is where the reaction comes in, we can actually, we could look at six cards and draw one, or we can draw two cards from three. I think we're better off drawing two cards from three, to be honest, because first of all, we avoid... Uh, uh, nasty cards coming up but secondly um, I'd rather have two extra cards so let's look at the top three cards one another perception two uh, an emergency cash and three yes a sneak attack fantastic well that's obvious a sneak attack um, do we need an emergency cash? Uh, or a perception, which is better? Um, it's kind of six and one and a half a dozen the other because we could use the emergency cash to boost up hyper awareness for those attacks. But then again, um, hmm. I think of the two, emergency cash is better in the sense that it gives you more flexibility than perception, in the sense that you could use it for evasion or for that. So I'm going to take the emergency cash and uh, put this back in, shuffle this up. Okay. For our second action, I'm going to draw another card. Well, just hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this will be our eighth card. Yep, let's do that. Manual dexterity. And then for our final action, I'm going to play emergency cash and get three more resources. There we go. So there we go. I think we're in a pretty good position now um, to take on the ghoul priest. We've got a sneak attack. We've got lots of ways to evade. We've got lots of ways to fight. Uh, we've got an elusive. We've got plenty of resources. I can't see any reason why we can't go ahead and take on the ghoul priest. I think we're in a pretty good place. So we move into the enemy phase. There are, of course no enemies to speak of. So we move into upkeep. We can flip these over, take another resource, and then we will draw another card and we get a deduction. Now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We've got eight cards, so we're fine. We've got the full set of cards. The old book of law does a nice rotation back to upright. So I think we're all good. So I think we can spend the three clues that are required at the end of the at the end of the round or the end of the yeah end of the round. There we go. So let's shift up. This is turn. We're still in turn six. So we will flip the barrier. Using the barrel from the attic, you carry ice and snow from the cellar and hurl it at the barrier. The barrier sparks and shudders as it consumes the ice, then hisses and fades out of existence. The barrier blocking the passage into the parlour has vanished. Reveal the parlour. Put Leader Chandler and the ghoul priest in the hallway. Well, here's the ghoul priest. Just find Leader. Here's Leader Chandler. Okay, so it's revealed. Oops. So Leisure Chandler goes in here. So it's now revealed. The parlor is now revealed. The ghoul priest goes down here in our threat area. Um, and then, um, yeah, spawns the ghoul priest in the hallway. So that's all that. Here we go. Act 3A. What have you done? 
A woman with a torch stands in your parlour, a glimmer of hatred in her eyes. What have you done to my barrier? She screams furious. Before you can answer, a ghastly wail sounds behind you, and a creature wearing robes and a deer skull mask tears through the wall, advancing toward you. If the ghoul priest is defeated, advance. There we go. Okay. So that's the end of the upkeep phase. We've got the ghoul priest on us. Hello, Mandy. How are you? Uh, nice to see you. I was hoping I was going to bash you up, but you're looking uh, like you've got lots. Uh, maybe we can be friends. Look, I'm even prepared to sit in this uh, bucket of fire for you. See, I don't mind. Just don't be nasty to me, all right? Okay. So we move into the mythos phase. Uh, um, yes. So we will shift up here. Turn seven for Doom. Let's see what the encounter deck has. And the encounter deck has uh, of all the cards to get. You are kidding me. Frozen in fear. Bloody hell. Uh. <laughs> well, good job. We've got elusive. That's all I can say. Wow. What a card to get. What a time to get that of all the cards. Oh, well. Okay, so let's move into uh, the investigation phase. Three actions. First action is to spend two and fast play elusive. Disengage from each enemy engaged with you and move to a revealed location with no enemies. Okay, so we will disengage from the ghoul priest. Leave the ghoul priest in the hallway and we will move not the hallway, we will move Mandy to the parlour. Resign, we can resign, this is too much for me. Or while with while Lita Chandler is not controlled by a player, she gains tar Parley Test 4. Now I don't think Parley is one of the things for Frozen in Fear. Move fire to evade. So we can go ahead and, so that was our, that, no that was a fast action. So we've still got three actions. Fantastic. So our next action is to go ahead and parley with Lita. Our first action is to parley with Lita Chandler. So she's a four and we are a five. Okay, so what do we do here? Five. So we can use our hyper aware, we can use our resources here. So what do we want to make it? Because she's a four, we want to make it an eight, I think. So five, I'm going to use this six, seven, eight. So I'm going to make it an eight versus, uh, that was right, wasn't it? It was a four. Eight versus four. So a minus four or better. Let's move that there. Minus four or better. And we get a zero and we successfully. Oh, hello, Mandy. Lovely to see you. Oh, yes, I'd love to help you bash up the ghoul priest. Yes, that would be very, very nice. Oh, yes, I haven't been haven't been called on to do this in such a long time. I'm really looking forward to it. So, Leader Chandler, um, we get plus one fight. And when an investigator successfully attacks a monster... Now, the thing is, if we use Mind Over Matter, we wouldn't get the plus one fight. But if we... He is a monster, isn't he? I just wanted to double-check that. Please be a monster. Please be a monster. Yes. He's a monster. So uh, it means we do plus one damage, which is really helpful because uh, otherwise we wouldn't do much damage. So there we go. That's our first action uh, with Lita. So um, we've still got two actions left. Now, what we don't want to do is we don't want to sit here in the parlor. Ghoul Priest comes in and bashes us. So I think what we do is we move back to the hallway. Yep. We move back to the hallway. Now, um, and that's ah, uh, that was two actions, wasn't it? Uh, uh, no. Oh boy. Sorry, I've forgotten about this frozen in fear. This is really annoying. So. It didn't cost us anything to move here, but if we move now, it will take two actions. So either we um, we either move and the ghoul priest hits us in the hallway, 
or we um, we stay and the ghoul priest hits us in the hall. We're going to get hit, whatever happens. But the main thing is we've got to get rid of this frozen in fear. And I've realized we don't have any um, head pips. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually, I'm going to exhaust the old book of law. Um, I'm going to look at the top three cards and draw two. So that was it's going to be my second action. So let's look at the three cards. One. Two, three. Oh, hold on. Oh, no. When you search your deck and this card is amongst the search cards, discard it, cancel the search and all of its effects and shuffle, shuffle the search deck, draw the top card. Okay. So we discard it, cancel the search, So these go back in. That's really annoying. That gets searched up and we draw from the uh, encounter deck. Oh, we don't need to go there. So what do we draw? We draw another frozen in fear. So we now have two frozen in fears in place. So that means we these stack. So basically it takes four actions to move, fight or evade, which means we can't do either. So for our third action, oh my goodness, this is terrible. I'm going to draw a card and we get a knife. Okay, so essentially we can't move, fight or evade whilst we've got these two, but we now have the possibility of, um, we now have the possibility of getting rid of them, although we have limited possibilities because we, we have no head. Um, that shocking discovery really was shocking. Okay, so let's do this first frozen. Is it the end of our round or at the end of your turn? So we'll do this first one. Three versus three. Chaos bag gives us a zero. So we discard it. Wow. Now this one. Three versus three. Chaos bag gives us a skull, which I think is minus X is the number of ghoul enemies at your location. There are no ghoul enemies at our location. Wow. So we discard both of them. <laughs> What a roller coaster ride. We get a shocking discovery. We draw another frozen in fear. We are absolutely in a terrible way. And then we manage to draw a zero and a skull and we get rid of them both. So we're only frozen in fear for a very short space of time. Anyway, so we move into the investig enemy phase, which means that the uh, ghoul priest moves into the parlor, engages with us immediately and does uh, two damage and two, two, um, two and two. So what am I going to do here? Shall I take them or shall I put them? I'll probably put them on Leader Chandler. So she takes the two and the two. She can take them. Um, yeah, so that's the enemy phase. Oh boy. So we move into the upkeep phase. So a book of law. Readies. We uh, upkeep here. Take a resource, draw a card, and we draw into another manual dexterity. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven. I feel like we should have drawn a card for something here. We should have drawn a card for Leader Chandler. Um, but we didn't. Oh well, it's too late. We're just going to have to uh, live with that. I totally missed that. But anyway, um, <clears throat> we'll just move on as we are. Um, okay, so that's the end of the upkeep phase. So we move into the mythos phase. Let's shift up here. We're in turn eight. Five doom. Encounter deck gives us... Oh. <laughs> ah, the ravenous ghoul. Okay, so we have a ravenous ghoul on us. Um, okay, whatever. <laughs> I mean, if we had a machete, we'd be in a pretty bad way at the moment, but we don't. All right, so let's move into the investigation phase. We have three actions. Okay. <clears throat> so um, I think it's time for some fighting. Um, so I think the first thing we're going to do is for our, for our fast action, yeah, we're going to spend one and bring out the mind over matter. 
So fast play during your turn until the end of the round, Jamie. Use your intellect in place of your fight and evade. So that's good. So we are now fight. We're, we're using our intellect. So we so that's a five. So we're going to first thing we're going to do is we're going to fight the ghoul priest using our intellect. Is it you may? You don't have to do. You may. Okay. So we are a five. Um, 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 what are we going to do here? Five. Uh, let's make that a six. So that gives us a six. Let's make that a, let's spend some money. Seven, eight. Eight versus four. So against the ghoul priest. Now, if we succeed, then we do two damage. So eight versus four. Chaos bag says plus one. So we do two points of damage. Ow! There we go. So first two points of damage. We can do this for the rest of our turn, can't we? Till the end of the round, yep. Okay, so that's the first action. Um, well, we can do that again. So second action, we're going to fight again. So we are a five. Um, so, uh, yeah, six, seven, eight. So that gives us an eight versus a four. So again, a minus four or better. Chaos bag gives us a plus one. So that's another two points of damage. And I'm right about the two points with Leader Chandler, aren't I? An investigator successfully attacks a monster that, yep. Okay, so we have one action left. Um, we could use fight. We could throw the knife. Why don't we? Let's do it. Let's let's start. Let's finish spectacularly. So we're going to throw the knife. So that's a. Is this the right thing to do? That would be a one. We are a two. That would give us a four. Five. No, this is not a good idea. <laughs> I just realised. Uh, oh no! Hold on! Hold on! Hold on! Let's do this one. Two, four, five, six, so yeah, five, six, seven, that is an eight, right? So one, two, three, four, hold on, we threw the knife, let me just get this right, you think I'd be able to add up, wouldn't you? So that's a one. We already started a two. We throw the knife, which gives us a four. Then we throw in these cards, a five, a six, a seven, and an eight. So we're an eight um, versus a four. And this will do actually more damage because this will do, um, I think we do extra damage for throwing the knife. Uh, yeah, so we'll do three points of damage if this succeeds. So an eight versus a four fight. Against the Ghoul Priest, Chaos Bag gives us a zero, and we succeed. The Ghoul Priest goes down. Ah! Ladies and gentlemen, we did it. Wow. And the Ghoul Priest dies. Wow. Okay. There we go. What was? What were we in? Turn eight. So again, a Dream Eater uh, investigator has done really, really well. That was... Um, that was really fantastic. I thought I thought things were we were in a really bad way for a second there because because of our shocking discovery we ended up with two um, we ended up with uh, with two uh, frozen in fears. But amazingly, we managed to um, we managed to get out of both of them. We took uh, Leader Chandler took a fair bit of damage from the Ghoul Priest, but it wasn't enough. We we're able to use our mind over matter to essentially uh, kill the Ghoul Priest and throw the knife and finish him off uh, at the end of turn eight. So what a fantastic outcome for Mandy! Um, certainly one of the better performing um, seekers from that perspective. I really like her new ability, but it is fraught because that shocking discovery is pretty nasty um, all round. But uh, I can see how she would be really, really great in uh, in a 
in a in a sort of multiplayer game as well. So thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed watching this. Uh, next time, uh, change of pace. We will be taking um, a different Dream Eater investigator through the gathering. Uh, we've done Mandy Thompson, so we're only left with um, either uh, Luke Robinson, the mystic, or Patrice Hathaway. So I think we'll take Patrice through next time, the violinist. In fact, I just played Patrice in Eldritch Horror in the Investigator games. I haven't posted that yet. Uh, and we will see how she goes. But until then, as I said, I'm Krabby Terror 8. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.